Welcome to all the UPSC and State Civil Services aspirants in the Abhimanyu IS. My name is Pravesh Watts and I am the Senior Faculty of Indian Polity and Governance in the Abhimanyu IS. Our institute is grooming the students for the UPSC and State Civil Services exams from the last 23 years and is able to provide more than 2200 results since 1999. And to continue with the same path, we are coming with a YouTube series called Issue and Analysis in which we deal with the topics which have higher chances to come in the real exams, whether it is prelims or it is mains. As a faculty of polity and governance, I am coming with a topic today called Supreme Court Moots Deeper Scrutiny Before the Award of Death Penalty. So before we start our lecture on this, let me tell you something about us, that we the Abhimanyu IAS are targeting IAS exam or the civil service exam 2023 and 24 and we are providing one year course for both prelims and mains in an integrated form will also be giving the personal mentorship to all the students this course would be happening in both the modes online as well as in offline and those who wants to join they may get a link in the description box of the YouTube and they can continue their dream to become an IAS or the IPS officers by getting our assistance. So let's move on our topic, which is Supreme Court moots deeper scrutiny before the award of death penalty, which is also considered as capital punishment. This term death penalty or the capital punishment is also the integral part of our constitution. This was debated during the constituent assembly debates and this death penalty was retained in our constitution to deal with heinous crimes and to deal the crimes which are anti-nationals and have higher chances to disregard the authorities of state. So now let's move on next slide. Supreme Court on 22 April 2022 asked from the Attorney General who is also considered as the highest law officer of India or the first law officer of India to assist Supreme Court or judiciary in institutionalizing a mechanism which helps in providing crucial information. Crucial information for what? To decide whether a person should be condemned to death or not before the trial judges. The trial judges takes decisions and before that they need some sort of information regarding that Supreme Court asked from the Attorney General to provide that mechanism which is a systematized mechanism which will give them crucial information to decide the feasibility of giving the capital punishment to the convicts. Second, not only the Attorney General is considered with this issue, even the Supreme Court time and again has provided some recommendations to reform it. Right? And these are the various reforms suggested by the Supreme Court in which first it says that trial judges should be assisted by the mitigation investigators in determination of the punishment. When the trial judges are taking decisions and giving the punishments to the, to the criminals, they have to be assisted by these new guys or new men called mitigation investigators. and. Who are they? I'll be telling you. These mitigation investigators are the experts in field of various social disciplines called social work, sociology, criminology, physiology, medical science and so and so forth. Which means that the people who are expert in their particular fields would be considered as mitigation investigators to provide crucial information to the judges or the trial judges in checking and in deciding the judgments regarding the death penalty. Third, this is the role of mitigation investigators is that they will take the interview of the convicts who are inside the jails or behind the bars, their families and any other person who is associated with the prisoners. So the criminal who is behind the bars the mitigation investigators will not only take the interviews of those, they will also take the interviews of the people who are associated with the prisoners indirectly or indirectly manner, like their family members, their friends, their relatives and so and so forth. Fourth, 
this information would be placed before trial judges to aid them in the judicial proceedings which is a, again crux of this uh, reform is that when trial judges are taking decisions on the death penalty and giving uh, this uh, judgments to the criminals so they have to be assisted with this information which is considered as the perfect information to decide the feasibility or the legality of giving death penalty to a criminal second constitutionality of death penalty in india this is not that supreme court this time specific specifically have asked from the attorney general and from the legal authorities regarding the death penalty and its feasibility but time and again our law commissions are constituted by the executive authorities to decide the feasibility or the reasonability of death penalty the meaning of constitutionality is to decide on the basis of constitutional principles precedents provisions and to justify an act right so the meaning of constitutionality is to decide the legality of something on the basis of constitutional principles so death sentence was examined by fourth law commission in its 35th report the law commission was constituted and they provided their 35th report which was titled as capital punishment 1967 in the year 1967 so what they recommended is that death penalty should be retained in india or should be continued in india because we want death penalty to be given to the people or to the criminal who have done very heinous crimes or very dangerous crimes right again in the year 2015 20th law commission was constituted and they provided a report called death penalty in the year 2050 and what they concluded was that death penalty should be abolished but should also be retained or continued specifically for terror offenses and war against india which means the criminal acts which are anti india anti national against the interest of the large society that should be considered as enough to provide death penalty to the criminals who have done such an act understood now let's move on next slide this says famous judicial verdicts on the issue of death penalty or capital punishment time and again supreme court deals with these issues on death penalty and they also have provided the famous judgments which we are going to deal so first of famous judgments or the verdicts of supreme court is rajendra prasad versus state of up in the year 1979 in this judgment or verdict what supreme court says that death penalty is violation of article 14 19 and 21 which are important fundamental rights of the citizens but what they again says is that to impose it two things should be considered primarily which are special reasons should be recorded in the writing we have to record in writing what were the special reasons under which we are providing the death penalty to the criminals in vague or randomly the judges can't deliver death penalty to the criminals they have to provide datas they have to justify on the basis of writing in record should be imposed in extraordinary situations which means that death penalty and its usage should not be used to serve the political or our nave interest or the judicial interest rather it should be provided in extra ordinary situations which are enough to examine the legality and the constitutionality of the death penalty because the judges have to record in the writing also second famous case comes machhi singh versus state of punjab in the year 1983 this is again a very famous verdict on the issue of death penalty what court says that we are laying down five important conditions to be considered while deciding or determining the death penalty first this is that manner in which the crime was committed what were the ways and techniques which the criminal used on the victim and those manner would be considered by the judges understood second what was the motive personal motive professional motive any other motive so that motives would also be considered in determination of it third anti social nature 
whether the act of the criminal was anti social or not that would be also considered i mean for the entire society could this criminal act be considered as anti social or not this would also be considered fourth magnitude or the intensity what was the level of uh, you know criminal act which the criminal did on the victim and the last is personality of the victim what was the personality whether she was woman men old age orphanage uh, you know child Th these are the constituent parts of the personality of the victim right all these are the important issues or you can say that five important conditions which have to be considered by the judiciary whether it is the supreme court or the high courts in deciding the issue of death penalty and providing death penalty to a criminal third important judgment which is being provided by the supreme court is also very famous which is called triveni bain versus state of gujarat in the year 1989 right so triveni bain is a name which is you know uh, getting reflected in the terms of gujarat also so triveni bain versus state of gujarat in the year 1989 in which supreme court says that constitution does not prohibit death penalty which i am again reiterating that constitution is providing death penalty as an integral part of it right so this much is all about the judgments and the reforms and the current part on the issue of death penalty so now deal on the conclusion part so as per the contemporary judgments of judiciary death penalty is constitutionally valid it is constitutionally valid because it is part of the constitution and not violative of fundamental rights because earlier what they were saying that article 14 19 and 21 are getting abridged when you are providing death penalty to a criminal but we have to consider this issue that those fundamental rights are abridged or getting abridged of a criminal he is a criminal he is not a good citizen of our country he is not a good citizen of our society so yes we can take the fundamental rights of such an person of such an individual who is anti social who is anti country who is anti citizen right and this aims to deliver justice to the victims and establish law and order in the society so these are the two primary responsibility of the state or a country that the machinery of the state the government has primary responsibility to deliver justice to the victims because state is called an institution to provide justice if state is unable to provide justice we can't make it legalize and we can't justify the institutions of state and we witness what called civil wars third second law and order this is again an important task of the state to provide law and order in the society so when we are giving death penalty to those criminals who are anti india who are anti social and who have done heinous crimes like terror attacks and war against india we are doing two important task the state is performing two important task that first it providing justice to the victim and second it is providing law and order in the society right which is an important task of state and its machinery and in the last this says that though everything is good but it should be used with proper legal considerations which means you have to record in the writing you have to see you have to check the feasibility under the constitutional provisions under the crpc cpc ipc and so and so forth laws so on the basis of all these matters and all these precedents you have to determine the punishment of death penalty to the criminals and then you have to provide justice to the victim so this much is enough on this topic called death penalty so thank you so much for listening me and we'll meet again on a next topic on a next day so stay healthy stay wealthy read well and we'll meet again thank you so much